I love <laughs> comedy. <laughs> so much fun. Okay. No, I, no, I would love to. Let me just um get the. I'd love to. Let me just um. You never, ever, ever close any drawers that you ever open, ever. Oh, I looked at them. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I looked at them before they fell. I don't know what that means. If you walk, you will fly. Ah, my spirit animal. Holding on the car. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're just the triple horns. That's the scene. <laughs> you think I like sounding like the lady from John and K plus eight? I'm obsessed. <laughs> If you would just let me do some things for you, I think I would surprise you. I How think... long does a dish need to soak? Two days? I give you dishes, you put them in, you say I'm letting them soak. I put, I put detergent in too. I've seen the commercial, it lifts the dirt off. It lifts the dirt and oil off of the dishes. <laughs> Honey, put on your seatbelt! <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. I made you a lot of almost vomiting breathing. I'm gonna do breathing. Just give me another with the crazy witch cream and then give me like a Will Smith bad voice when she goes do like a. Woo! Woo! Will Smith! <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> Woo! Like that kind of thing? Woo! Like that? I think I looked in the lens, though. I think I looked in the old dirty barrel there. Oh. That's what I'm talking about! Whoa. What I'm telling you business, huh? Oh. Oh. What are you doing? That's what I'm talking about! What the hell is that guy in the... We just killed somebody! Ah! 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 <laughs> I started laughing. Honey, honey, hard right of the light. Next light. Now! Oh, oh shit, I'm sorry. Damn it. Ready? Hard right, next light! Wait, wait, you! Right now! Oh, I did it again. Fuck me. That's what I thought you said. Oh, blow me! <laughs> Which reminds me, when was the last time I saw my balls? Excuse me? Thank you for nothing. Reset, reset, please. Right. Right. I do okay. I do all right. I bet your balls deep. Wow. Oh, that was just terrible. All the way. I was really late. I'm having sex. I'm getting busy. Is that supposed to be me, or is that like Fat Albert or somebody? I mean, what, what was that? The service elevator past the office. Okay, go. Fat Albert. Hang on. Fat Albert man or what? Mother. Ah. And you're stashing dirty pictures of me? Really dirty, it, gross it, pictures. You, you been a. <laughs> you. Yeah. Sucker. <laughs> I never liked you either, but you're on my side. I forgot what, what did you guys write again? Don't use my line. I said to fucking watch him first. You fucking did that with the pointing at me too. Tina, Federal Express, here, give me something. Two away for a long, long time. Can't get that up. That's what she, she said. said. <laughs> I didn't put 
the house number. I, I didn't put the house number. Listen, I used listen, the cell wait, phone number. You. Ask me. Yeah. You. You used our number. <laughs> Zip your face up. Z Z oh, that you're talking about my face. Zip my face up. Zip my face? Why don't you zip your vagina, Raymond Burr? <laughs> God, thank you. That's enough. <laughs> what the hell was that? You should have had all that <laughs> dairy. <laughs> I think dating is the worst thing in the world. They either go really well or really bad. There's, you know, no kind of middle ground. The worst date I ever went on was a triple date with two of my older brothers. Mm -hmm. And I think it was actually the first date I ever asked a girl out on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to a Jethro Tull concert. Mm -hmm. I'm not a date person, so I, I can't personally say. Dates anymore. I don't, I don't even know what people that date. I guess I know a couple people, and it just always sounds like so dreadful. You know, going out to dinner and sitting there awkwardly across the table from somebody that you don't know and um, trying to find out if you like them. I don't find that to be fun at all. It's scary. My brothers kept looking at me all night and nudging each other in the ribs, and I could not have been more petrified. Well, I haven't been on many crazy dates, but my buddy, he also has not been on any crazy dates. I've never had a crazy, a really crazy date, but I did have a friend of a friend who had a date that was very successful and spent the night, and <laughs> it's disgusting, though. I went on a date with this guy who, um, when I, when I walked into his house, everything was covered in plastic because he still lived with his parents. It was uh, incredibly uncomfortable, and she was uncomfortable, and I walked her to the door and I shook her hand with them watching from the car, oh. for which I was a ridicule once I got back. I know, it's really gross. I probably shouldn't tell it. The craziest date that I've been on, it wasn't crazy, it was quite boring, actually. It was a blind date. And I don't know if the guy couldn't talk or if the cat had his tongue. I just, it wasn't good. So don't ever set me up on a blind date. Unfortunately, uh, my car got a, like, a flat tire, and I'm, I don't know how to change the tire. <laughs> so we was in the, what, we was in the, a bad, I don't want to say bad, but yeah, it was a tough neighborhood. We was in a rough neighborhood. So it turned out to be a bad day because my manhood felt, felt low and I had to let the lady change the tire. That's bad, right? I think a, a guy uh, may have come out to me during a date. <laughs> he took a shower and had to go to the bathroom, and he went in the shower. I'm not talking about number one. <laughs> he insisted that we watch the movie Tommy Boy, which is a great movie, but um, then he told me that it was his dad's favorite movie, and then asked his dad to come down and sit on his favorite chair and watch the movie with us. I remember she got really upset at me one time. It was, it was on the phone, and she was threatening to stab me. And I'm like, you know, all right, whatever. You know, we got into it, and I hung up on her. And literally a half hour later, she showed up in my apartment with a tray of brownies. That's how nuts this girl was. She went from literally, I'm going to kill this guy, to I want to make him some food. He started to place my body, like, for us to make out, and so basically at one point he would, he would take my hand and he would hold it up like this, and the other hand he would put like this, and then he would move my head, and then, then he would, and then I would literally be in this position, and I'd try to put my hand down and he'd put everything back up, and then lean in to try to kiss me, and I, I, he had to have like been positioning me like a mannequin or something. I was getting my swirl on, right? And a grandpa walks in, right? And we like getting busy, busy. Like busy, busy till we dizzy. And he comes busting through the door like, hey, what's going on? What's going on here? Right, I'm like, you know, in my birthday clothes, like, right? I felt real bad, right? She was like, Grandpa, get out of here. Oh my gosh, you totally like, so embarrassing. Young man, you put on your clothes this instant. It's not like the old days, like where, you know, you could like date multiple people, you know, where it's like, it seemed like it was like a rehearsal thing, like just getting to know, we just, we went on a date. Oh, I'm, I'm booked on Thursday. I have a date on Thursday, but I'll date you on Friday. Usually, like, you think, why don't you just get up and, and walk away? But sometimes things are so uncomfortable that you, you just think, I'm just going to go through the motion 
and then let him kiss me, and then I'm going. I'm gonna leave, and maybe he'll stop. Just be completely honest. Say, look, you know, I don't want to waste your time. You know, let's let's just be perfectly upfront. You smell, and I didn't notice that mustache when I saw you in the dark. I have disgusting friends, but it happened, and he was like mortified and like, you know, with the steam, it was not good. They didn't go out again. Hey there, DVD viewers. Sean Levy here, director and producer of Date Night. Um, I wanted to just kind of set up the feature that you're about to watch, which is basically uh, a glimmer of just how much the job of a director, or at least the job of this director, uh, happens off camera. Music! Hey, Hire department hey, hey. It's something I learned early on doing my earlier movies with kids, where you realize that when you yell cut, everything deflates. Ready, Savannah? Give me like angry sounds with your throat, like this. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, go. Uh, Louder. Uh, uh. So I found that kind of calling out direction while you're rolling is a good way of adjusting and kind of doing these mini course corrections or suggestions to your actors without losing the kind of uh, adrenalized focus that happens once the camera's rolling. Three, two, one, <laughs> Here in Date Night, maybe most memorably see it in the Peppermint Hippo, where Steve and Tina wanted to look kind of awkward and lost and like they were making crap up as they went along. Um, but it was me screaming out suggestions of dance moves and the suggestions themselves became slightly absurd and comedic. So we thought that I'd, you know, willingly embarrass myself for you. Take a look. And do a strip tease with the zipper. Slowly, yes, sensuously, Steve. Oh, yeah, rub your own chest sensuously, yeah, nipples. Now give me doggy sounds. No, no, keep your teeth together. Give me, hit that, hit that hole. Hit that, hit that hole right there. Ooh, up and down his body. Feel him up like he's a high school bra. Like, like a Will Smith bad boys when she go through, like a woo! <laughs> now work his hair, sexy hair, yeah. Sultry face, Steve. Sultry, yeah. Do the thing with that, with your nose and then that clap. It's frustration. Come on, man. Stop clapping your nose. Come on, man. Ah. Come on, man. Work his whole face like rubber, Tina. Hands in his mouth. Make him gag a little, Steve. Make him gag, Tina. Oh, oh. <laughs> now more like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. One more. Good, thanks. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is a weird way to make a living. Let's just say it. Goodness, it's exhausting. Okay, so this featurette's a cool one because on every movie you do a camera test, which has a few goals. One, to kind of check out what might be the look of the lighting of the movie to show the studio a, a glimmer of the aesthetic that you have in mind. Another is to show yourself and the studio wardrobe and costumes that you're considering, makeup, hair, uh, basically a chance to see your actors in front of a camera, in front of movie lights. So what you're gonna see is the date night camera test. And I had this notion of the vibe of the movie. I had this notion of husband and wife holding hands giving that kind of thousand yard stare of like, what the hell just happened to us? And what was interesting about it is the billboards and the bus posters of date night were taken on this day before we'd even shot the movie. So take a look and it just goes to show you, yeah, there might be a purpose to a thing, but if you can co-opt 
that purpose and make it your own, you can get that much more out of it. That was the thinking at least, take a look. Roll camera up. Hey there, here we are, good morning. I say good morning even though it's actually evening. When you're shooting nights, which we are on a movie called Date Night, uh, we wish each other good morning even though we've been sleeping all day and we're gonna stay up all night working, which does wonders to the uh, psycho-emotional life, but uh, gets a cool looking movie. So I'm gonna head on in, get myself settled, and then uh, we'll get to work. Ready? Um, it's not even call and it's raining, um, but they need me to give them a general idea of the uh, parameters of the shot. We're here in New York City where it has rained, I think, every day that we have filmed in New York. Zulu! Being in New York has been a challenge, but the best way to go about it is you just go with the flow. You know there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of traffic. We've been in different neighborhoods almost every single night. Tonight, we're in the West Village uh, shooting Holbrook's Loft, which is this big building right behind us. Then we're going down to the Meatpacking District, which is about six blocks away, uh, to shoot a reminiscing conversation between husband and wife on a cobblestone street. So you needed parameters for a first what shot? Which do we want to start first? Well, let's do the master, right? So. Hi, Dean. Dean Semler, by the way, my cinematographer, Oscar winner for Dancers with Wolves, Oscar nominated for Apocalypto, kind of one of the pioneers of digital. Um, we're shooting on a digital system called the Genesis. My first time doing that. Our operator also, Andy. I'm finding that the partnership on this movie is as much with him as it is with my cinematographer. Date Night is my sixth film on the Genesis digital camera from Panavision. I spend my life in here, in this little black tent, like a bat cave. Whereas normally I'd be walking around outside, lighting a shot with a light meter. I'm able to control exposure from here. I have a remote, it's the iris on the lens, so I can make it lighter or darker. I, I do it all from here without having to go out there with a light meter. Dean, as you've seen in the tent, he sort of relaying through my ear what he wants to look at. Got to yell at these guys. Can we clear the lens, please? We're doing a very important interview in here. Andy, do you want to do a run for me? He'll get me to run the camera up and down and prior to our shooting so we can see what it looks like in his tent. We got some focus. The system is great because the image is the way it's going to look in the cinema. Yeah, so maybe we go here 
and just have them come in on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we gain anything from being on any mini crane here and doing... No, I, think you, I don't think you want to go high. No you want way. to see the road with. And we building. actually want to see the height of that yeah. building. So Dolly, a can only one camera, yeah. I think? All right, so that's our first shot? Okay. And then our second shot will just kind of be on the right side of her. We're going to be here. Okay. I think the buzzer's going to be something like that. And then we're going to want to get another shot where we're up over that camera looking down at them. Maybe I'll go write a shot list. Yeah. But don't we need to get, um, like, a security cam POV of exterior yes. garage? Yeah. Well, do we want to try and get this by lunch? We got one, two, two three, three, three and four, basically. That's the other scene. Three and four. Uh, Cops is five. Right. Creep out is six. Driveway is seven. Gina, we'll go write a shot. I'll, I'll come and see you in a second. Okay, thanks. So what often happens is, all right, rather than just having the shots exist in my head, I'll write them down so that the crew has a sense of the work. Because, I, you know, it just kind of makes everyone a partner in what we're trying to do. We and have seven shots before lunch. Something like that. And I think it's going to be like one, two, three, four, and five after lunch. OK, including uh, the POV. POV. OK. Got it. And I really, really want to get out of this set by lunch. I'm with you. So okay. lunch being midnight. So we're not even going to uh, rehearse, right? There's mosquitoes in here. There we go. OK. With my limited edition date um, night hat. Yep, probably in the van away. You know what occurred to me as I was writing up the shot list, though, guys, is we need to tell the joke of Steve Carell in Wahlberg's tracksuit. Then we'll cut to the wine. So what we're doing here is this is our second scene of the night. So what we do is we come here while there's still daylight so that uh, we're not walking around in the dark. This is the scene where kind of all seems lost for Tina and Steve and are walking on this cobblestone street down here in the Meatpacking District. And they look up at this odd shaped building and uh, they realize that that was their first apartment. How close would you like them to come? When they're walking? Yes. Well, you want to start head to toe, head to toe and, on and, you and yeah. pull them back in a mid. What are we on? Where's 35. This? Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, uh, walk it for me, if you would. We would just use this so that the wipe is in motion. Action. This is this mellow counterpoint in the middle of the movie. And freeze. Kind of highlighting their, like, crappy apartment. And action. But perhaps more vital romance in their youth compared to the complacency of marriage. And we're moving up slightly. I think it's great. It's a great shot. They're trying to pull the car out. Where are you? I mean, now, I suppose, is the time to practice, right? Yes. As you can see, this garage is not really built for a low-profile sports car. So you would be surprised at how much effort is taken to come up with a ramp that won't bottom out the nose of the R8. So now we're about to do a test of that. So guys, we're going to jump on this side over here. That car's coming hot. Down that ramp. So ladies and gentlemen, we just got to back up every guys over your car driving down this street. All right, guys, let's confirm that we have four corners locked up right now. Guys, here comes the rehearsal. OK, clear the corners, guys. Rehearsal's up. Guys, clear the street. Here we go. Uh, Safety Gabby, first, stay always. There. Gabby, stay there. Go inside. Lock it up. OK, guys, here's our time frame. 815. Tina changes. 8.30, water on the ground. All the cones go now. Right, Four corner lockdown, all the way down here, and we need to take it down here. A lockdown okay. is where we close the street so that our actors can actually walk across the street safely. We'll put our own cabs in here with trained drivers that will be able to get on their brakes if for some reason the actors were to stop in the middle of the street. And it's just a safety protocol. So basically, we're set to do the shot. We just have to wait for darkness now. Yeah. I would love that. OK, so guys, you have one line as you're walking, which is, what if he doesn't remember you? I think that should be on your back. So I think that's kind of as you're crossing the street. Walk as quick as you can. Remember, you ran away from the realty office. Mm -hmm. So this is the section that really needs to maintain the urgency. OK. Here comes rehearsal. Josh, yo, go ahead and call it. Here we go. Action. What if he doesn't remember you? This is a long walk. I don't know, but this is the most fun. This movie's going to be eight hours long. Is this <laughs> it? No. Ring the bell. Hello? Uh, hi, Holbrook. You might not remember me. I'm Claire Foster. I'm a real estate agent. I remember you. It's a little it's late. It's pretty late, you know? No, I know, and I, I'm, I'm really very sorry, but it's an emergency. Set up for this, Steve. Yeah. 
Should I take him in and show them the place while you're wetting down? OK. Why can she not? Maybe just push further. Wet it down, please. We're going to wet down the street, which will pick up all the lighting effects and really uh, accentuate night. Guys, just back up. Here comes the wet down. So next one's picture, right? Yeah. Oh, camera. Rolling. Speed. Set. And action. What if he doesn't remember you? What I think is cool is once you get back on a movie set at night, you realize it's just this, like, cluster island of light. Action! Sorry. What if he doesn't remember you? One more. On action, you've been buzzed in, Tina. Okay. Action! Cut! Cut! Okay, moving on. New deal, new deal. Guys, so why don't you hang out inside? We're gonna skip to the end of the scene, which is you guys in the car driving out while the cops are here. Um, well, what I want, should we bring Dean out and Andy? Here we go. So guys, two cameras here. One is actually very long lens and quite tight on the two cops at the door. And we're gonna do, and then one is wider, seeing the car. And so I guess we put in the ramp and we line it up, right? Yeah. Watch the back. So it's gonna back up, guys. Watch yourselves. I don't think they're yelling at me. That's what I say right before I get hit. Zulu, how are we doing? I gotta do one rehearsal with the car and then we're ready to shoot. It's all about maximum efficiency, especially shooting nights in summer. We basically have an eight-hour shoot day. Normally, shoot day is 12 hours long. So while we're getting the car ready, I'm over here with Common and Jimmy Simpson, who play our rogue, dirty cops, pre-rehearsing the scenes so that when cameras and car and lighting is ready, they know what they're doing. Hey, everybody out of the street now, please. This car's coming out. Am I not safe here? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll back up. I will cue you, Jimmy. And notice. Honestly, I was looking at them. Okay. This guy here is Jack Gill. He's our second unit director and stunt coordinator. He has been shooting some kick-ass second unit stuff. It's going to make me look very good. That's pretty good. That's fast. All right, can we start shooting these? Because I have a bunch of alts. Stand by, everybody. Scroll camera up. We gotta adjust, we gotta go again for B, right? The truth is, he could take, don't you think, guys, he could take, like, 20% off his feet and it would still be super fast? Yeah. Okay, Rob, One more. Andy's pointing out that we can actually see Tina, and so if we take the sound from the earlier takes and put it on that speed, it's gonna feel plenty fast. Okay. Someone is using my table to store really gross-looking sandwich meat. Plus a sandwich that I think has been here for several days. Is this yours? <laughs> Steve Carell seems to store sandwiches on my table. This is everything I'm about. God, it warms my heart. This is everything I reject. Joy. I'll have two. Ugh. Is it really yours, Steve? This set is incredibly tense. Because it's <laughs> Zulu, is this yourself? It's supposed to be on my shelf. If I rent you the lower level. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Stand by me. Whoa, that's good. Corey Feldman. Oh. Uh, oh, Lost wow. Boys. Um, Lost Boys, I gotta go with Keeper. Interesting. I'm, I'll just educate the viewing audience. What this is, is you have to name a movie, and then the next person has to name an actor in that movie, and then the next person has to name another movie that that actor was in, and you have to go round and round. Flatliners. Nice. I'm gonna hit. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna it, it wasn't it the actress who's now with the, like, she was also in St. Elmo's Fire? Is oh, she in that? She... Flatliners? I'm pretty sure. And now uh, she's with a younger husband. Uh, right? Was she in that? Yes, right? Oh, Isn't Demi Moore Demi in Flatliners? Moore. I feel I like I'm know. right. I think you're... 
There might be a. a no, I mean, I'm, I'm out. Roberts is the main. Richard Dean. Yeah. yeah. Is Julia Roberts in Flatliners yeah. or to me more or both? Julia Roberts. So, uh, to me more as well? No. <laughs> Damn it! Knock <laughs> it up. I could knock it up. Comments. Ah! You know what? That's okay. Great, and now there's witness that. to my shame. Yeah, okay, what about the. Yeah, let's use this one. Damn, Damn eyes. He wanted to know what would be on the slate, the next number up. Cut! Break this down. Let's get a camera going. So every time you change a lens or move the camera or jump down to a different section of dialogue, it constitutes a new setup. And every setup on a slate gets a new letter based on the scene number. So this is scene 58, and 58 Charlie is up on the slate. Margaret. That means we've done three setups in scene 58. Let me see your right arm straight. Went pushing with the left. I had to think of what was my right arm. OK. Let's go to one, guys. Diane, what hand was the uh, message in? Left hand. Holbrook, uh, you may not remember me. This is Claire Foster. Buzz. <laughs> Hold on. Open it, Holbrook. Good. Cut. Cut. <laughs> You guys can go on probably a solid hour relax. Okay. When I next see you, we'll be strolling cobblestones, which will be challenging, okay. but awesome looking. Have a nice break. Take them anywhere in the city. Tom and Jimmy, please. Okay. Hey, Mark. Mr. Grant, this is the NYPD. We need to ask you a few questions. Cut. Thank you. Okay. Cut. Tom and Jimmy, done for the night, right? Oh, see you tomorrow in the woods, guys. See you in the woods, the boys. The woods. Oh, you want something? Hey, everybody. The shot moves us. Guys, let's please tuck back behind the stop sign. Back round. All right, we're done at this location, guys. We wrapped this location to the trucks, eat lunch, and then we're at the Cobblestone Street at the Meatpacking District. Claire and Phil walk and talk. Thank you very much. Let's go now. My name is Tom McGoldrick. I'm a transportation coordinator and Teamster in New York City. And essentially, we move the movies. We bring all the necessary equipment for filming, and oftentimes we have to move to multiple locations within a 30 or 40 minute window. We have to pack up all the trucks, camera, grip, electric, props, hair and makeup, wardrobe, to move them to our next location unpack them and get ready for the director to start shooting another scene. So we're going to review some cuts. Here, by the way, is Dean Zimmerman, my oh. awesome editor. They're going to freeze frame on you, just so you know. See, I know their style now. So like when we go like this, just expect to be frozen, so don't have a goofy expression. OK. So we'll try that again. Here's my awesome editor, Dean Zimmerman. See, I'm doing the freeze. I just saved you like $10 in digital Stop. effects. So let's watch the boathouse scene first. <laughs> I think we need more cuts in here. More cuts as they get in the boat, leading up to those three. Yes, that's funny. I think the music is working against us here. I think that once we cut to the slow boat, we want we want to actually like go against the like high tension and bring it back here. It should be like big action movie build up. Be like bum 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 bum. And just play the joke of it being slow boat to China. And then, and then, and then back inside. Right, and, and then, then right. do they need me? Mr. Samla, I'd like to take you over to the next shot to set up the crane. As a director's assistant, one of my main tasks is to be a conduit of information. I get information to him. Well, that sounds kind of important. And I get information from him to other people. Pretty much everyone that's involved with the production on the day People want Sean's ear, but then you kind of have to know how much he's got in his queue. Gina, get a sense on walkie. Like, is it OK in 10 minutes or right now? The walkie is very effective because you can be in 20 places at once, because you could be sitting in the middle of the trailer listening to information, and then, again, you're holding it, and then you're just waiting for the right moment to convey. Copy that. I will convey. Uh, right now, Sean. OK. All right. I would need to put something in the foreground. I just don't know what. Go to the start mark, guys. And Dean, I need enough front light in this shot that we see his silly outfit. Yeah, it is about right. But you're going to be over here. So let's get this track laid as fast as we can. Guys, I don't want to go through the Sorry, sorry. 
lockups. PA stop people from walking into the shot while we're shooting. If they walk through, you know it'll blow a take, and it's difficult lots of times because that's a nightclub, and late at night people are inebriated or just crazy, so you have to verbally use judo to stop people. Yeah. Hey, ladies. I'm titties. In the movie. Yeah. In the movie. Titties in the movie. <laughs> oh boy, this is this just got so much better. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. You can go where you need to go. They're mad people. Mad people. God, this place makes me feel ugly. So now it's two in the morning, and the challenge is that when you're doing night shoots, pretty much everyone is allowed to show how tired they are, except the director and the actors. All right. Ready and action. Oh, wow. Feels like 100 years ago. <sighs> this afternoon feels like 100 years ago. I'm gonna yeah. cut on the wipe of that trash pile. That right. will be, and you might as well write that. Cut from a B camera, start scene Wait. in B camera, cut to A camera on the wipe of the trash pile. Uh, does he? Does Dean want a new wet down? That didn't last long at all. Mark, see a camera on it. Even gentler on the Ollie memory if you would, Tina. Mm hmm. I'm not a gentle woman. Neither is Claire Foster. And I will not be made gentle. Just for the next 25 seconds. <laughs> the last time we were up this late was the night Ollie was born. Good. OK. Now, let's get into some coverage. Maybe we're going to get it all. Let's try to get it all. It would be really nice if it were like clean, moving POV. But then if they were still here, I'd step them into it and just roll off a bit you know, over them. But let's see if we get there. So right now, yeah. let us do, Crane comes over here. Do Tina. Do Tina. And do Tina yeah. into that. Pictures up, here we go. No, the last time we were up this late was the night Ollie was born. Very good. Good, Tina. Okay. Cut, turning around. Josh. Yes, sir. We're going to do this, and then we're going to get the wild lines from first team, and then they're going home, and we'll do our last shot without them. Yeah. Now, what's that shadow? Work. Me? Yeah. Me. <laughs> Roll camera up. Rolling. Rolling. Good. Dean happy? Dean good? Yes. Wild lines. What if he doesn't remember you? We take a shot. What if he doesn't remember you? We'll take a shot. Good. That's it for tonight, right, Diane? We'll get the stuff in the rowboat when we're back. Good night and good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Okay. Martini. Oh, yeah. 4.30, definitely feeling it now. POV, clean moving across street POV. And thank you. Cut. Great job, ladies and gentlemen. That completes our photography for this evening. Get your call sheets, new location tomorrow. We're in Brooklyn at Prospect Park. First shot scenario, we're underneath the boat. You guys, we just completed a real long night. This is probably the longest day of the year, and uh, it's not going to be up any second, so we just made it. Time to go home. All right, guys, well, the end of a long night, another long night here at Date Night NYC 2009. Um, hopefully, you've seen a little bit ah, as I trip, and it all ends very badly. A um, little bit of what we do here, uh, what we do for a living, and um, lucky us also what we do for fun. So uh, catch you on the next one. Good night. Do you have anything in a size eight? What? Ew. Gross. No. Is it tough growing up without a dad? Maybe. Dyslexic or molested? What's your deal? Good luck with your midterms. That's why you're doing this, right? Pay your way through college. Hello. We ate here earlier with our good friend Sam I am. Hello, hello, good evening. I don't know if you remember us, but we were here earlier having dinner with our friend Sam I am. Bonsoir. We were in here earlier eating with our good friend Sam I am. You mean 
Well, I am. No, that's what you call him. No, this is less about. It's a bit of a madad. Did you hear how she pronounced yes. his name? Terrible. How pedestrian. Terrible. Is that what you call him? That's adorable. Yes, is that what you call him? You must not know him very well. No, is that what you call him? Yeah, no, 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 no. Did you hear how she pronounced his name? It's ridiculous. William thinks he may have left his phone here, and he really needs it. His cellular phone. Mm, he's left his mobile. His mobile. May I check? He's really blowing so up. So we came back to he find his phone for phone. our friend. It's just blowing up all over the place. May we go and find his phone at the table? William is looking for his phone. For the telephone, we search the phone. And we think that he might have we left it for at, the phone. at the table. He needs to go and look for the phone, please. He left his telly on the table. Go back. And I was wondering if I might go and fetch go it for him. Fetch it. Fine. This way. Oh, that would be smashing. Merci beaucoup. I'm going to fetch a phone. Okay, this is it. This is it. Okay, all right, I'll park here. It looks a little small. I can get it in. Beeping means you're gonna hit something. No, it means I'm close to hitting something. Oh, God. Oh, oh come on. All right. Got it. I got it this time. I feel good. I feel good about this. I feel good about this one. Here we go. Tell me when to cut it in. When do I cut? Now. Now? Okay. Cut it. Keep cutting. I'm cut. It's hard to decipher it's... them. Okay. Well, what is that? I don't like that. That's beat. the front. That's the front. Okay. How close am I? I'm right You're there. Just why don't we leave it here? Then. I have. I can't park it on the curb. We'll get a ticket. Tight squeeze. How much do I have? Well, I can't. Show me on your fingers. Oh, what is Show me. That much. Okay. Okay. Or I, I honestly can't. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right, good. Piece of cake. Can you open my door? Okay. Okay, now try. I don't know how to unlock your door. Come out my side. You, who would put a child Just come out in my the side. front of this? Who would Just put a child come here? Out this side, all right? Gosh. Oh, look, they're putting in a new gym over there. Yeah, I saw that. I was thinking about um, starting to work out again. Oh, you always feel better when you do. Mm. Did Ollie sound sick to you? I don't know. They're always sick. Maybe just some cardio, elliptical or Stairmaster or something. Oh, I'm really excited about this movie. Me too. Are we going to make it? Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to make it. I'm taking the back roads. Patented Phil Foster shortcut. Really? Because I think if you just turn right, turn. Calculating root. Make a use. She wants you to, if possible, go back and turn right. She does not know what she's talking about. Yeah, you're probably right. It's not like she's a computer with a computerized map for a brain. She gets confused on the back roads. She does. The computer gets confused. On the back roads, yes. In half a mile. <laughs> Don't worry, I got Please this. Make a U -turn. We'll definitely make the 715. Oh, looks like the only thing left is that cop movie with Ed Harris. Why is it always Ed Harris?
there. It's actually supposed to be pretty good. Honey, I know you like those cop movies, but I can't follow those things. Ten minutes in and I'll have no idea what's happening. All right, well, we can just skip the movie go to dinner. Works for me. These are just a few things I picked up in my travels. Is this... Are you giving Vladimir Putin a noogie? Yeah, Vladdy, that guy is hilarious. Oh, that's cool. 1861 Colt revolver, which was used by General Stonewall Jackson in the Battle of Chancellorville. A bit of a history buff. Of course you are. It's our first place. What? It's our first apartment. Right there. Oh my. Wow. Remember those banging pipes? <laughs> those crazy warped windows. We'd wake up in the morning and find a snowdrift by the bed. Last time we were up this late, it was in that window. No, the last time we were up this late was the night Ollie was born. <sighs> that apartment feels like 100 years ago. This afternoon feels like 100 years ago. We gotta go. I, I, I just couldn't bear to hear you in there like that anymore, my oh. brother. You should really read this. It's about a girl getting her period in the desert. Can't wait. You want a beer? Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, I don't know how you keep doing those things, man. Uh, well, that's marriage, I guess. You know, you do stuff that you don't want to do. Not me, not anymore. Hmm. Yeah, what do you mean? Haley and I are splitting. What? But you guys are happy. No, Phil, we're not. No, no, no. No, you guys are really happy. No, Phil, we really are not. We're miserable. We used to be happy, I think. It's hard to tell. I mean, it's quite possible that we were just drunk a lot. Brad, OK, well, why are we here then, in your house, having book club? I haven't told the kids. Oh. Can't tell the kids. Just please keep it under your hat until next week when we go public with it. Don't tell Claire. Claire. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what happened? I mean... I thought everything was fine. Really. The next thing I know, Haley starts getting more and more distant, and then eventually she tells me, and I'm quoting here, I, I am, I'm strangling in the noose of sameness. Huh. <laughs> At least it's poetic, I guess. No, it's not. Don't give her too much credit. That was the title of the book we read last week. So at first I was pissed, I really was. But then I realized, I know what she's talking about, okay? We're just cemented in these roles together and there's no breaking out of it. It's like that Asian dude in 16 Candles, Long Dick Dog. Long Duck Dong. Long Duck Dong, that dude. Getty Watanabe. That's that, him. He, he can't play, no matter how hard he tries, he can't play a doctor. Oh yeah, no, it'd be like, why is Long Duck Dong dressed up like a doctor? Right? And that's us! Oh. <sighs> We're stuck, we're just stuck in these, these, these roles, this routine, and it's... I mean, we're not even a couple anymore. We're just... <laughs> we're just excellent roommates. The most excellent roommates. I, um... I don't think you're Long Duck Dong. <sighs> what do you think? Um... I know that Haley must be hurting right now. And I'm betting you, she's gonna change her mind. Best fucking decision I ever made. Seriously, Claire, I have never been happier. I can do whatever I want. I can go dancing. Okay, when was the last time you and Phil actually danced together? I don't know, our wedding? Have you been dancing since your wedding? No, I'm thinking, did we even dance at the wedding? Yes, we did. Shania Twain, still the one, we danced. Okay, well, I wanna dance every night. And I wanna take my top off, and I want to get it on with three guys at the same time, because I can. Three guys at once? That's a nightmare. That is literally a recurring stress dream that I have. I can only think of jobs for two. Oh, no, I got it. Yeah, there's that one. I just don't understand how this happened. He just sort of went on autopilot. I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, you know, when I first started dating Brad, it was exciting. 
it was me and him against the world. We were on this adventure together. And then, you know, we got some money and then the kids and life just became great, solid, wonderful. Predictable. Predictable? How about stable? Stable is what people want. That's not what I want. Look, Brad has not done anything to excite me or surprise me in like 15 years. Who cares? What, uh, what do you want him to do, jump out of a closet at you? I'm like, ah! Anything. What do you, I don't understand what you want. I feel like we know each other too well. I know everything about him. I know that croutons make him gag. And he knows that if I have five glasses of wine, I'm gonna try to make out with the black guy. You're still doing that, huh? Yes. Mm. I, we're just ambling on, Claire. It's the same conversations, the same schedule, having sex in the same position twice a week. You guys were having sex twice a week? Yeah, it was, it was that rare. Yes, rare is why I was surprised. You are a lot like Nazrin, Claire. <laughs> I'm not like Nazrin. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Why are we talking about me? You're because... the one going crazy. No, hear me out. You are like Nazrin because you are ashamed of how vibrant you are. Oh, you deserve God. to feel sexy, Claire. Ew. And you should be able to dance again. And you need to walk among the birds. Yeah, I don't understand that metaphor. So and I feel plenty vibrant. Okay, maybe not three guys at once vibrant, but that is gross. That's, Phil makes me feel vibrant in different ways. We have a date tomorrow night. Great, okay. Well, enjoy the potato skins and the salmon. Walk among the birds. Oh my God, now the bad guys are dressed up like cops. Because the bad guys are cops. Move, move, move. Why are there cops involved? What is going on, Phil? What are we going to do? Honey, 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 honey. it's okay. They're gonna kill us. No, it's gonna, gonna be all right. Bodies in Clark, just wait, it'll be fine. Find us where Giuliani put the homeless just people. Breathe. Just breathe. Are you breathing? He's only in. Honey, focus, focus, focus. Are you focusing? <sighs> okay. Okay. Your eyes look crazy. I know, because I'm losing it. What are we gonna do? I am losing it. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We gotta get out of here. We gotta go home. We can't go home. What are you talking about, Phil? I am going home. I'm going home. Claire, they have our IDs. They know where we live. Oh my God, the kids. Hello. Do you accept a collect phone call from? Oh my God, this phone smells like urine. Uh, yes, I, I accept. Katie! Foster's, what up? Katie, are the kids okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. Okay, listen to me. I'm gonna need you to stay a little late tonight. That is gonna be a problem for me. What? I actually have a party to get to. But no, no, why would you be going to a party? You're babysitting. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys are the Fosters. You're always home by 9.30. Yeah, okay, well, tonight it just so happens that we're gonna be staying out a little bit later. And nice, but I already promised my friends. You can talk to my okay. okay, Katie, hi, it's Phil. Hi. Where's that freaking guy when you need him? Yeah. Katie, I don't have time to talk right now. I'll pay you double the stay. That's really nice of you. But I don't think that's gonna close it. Are you kidding me? What, what is she saying? She's right. What is that little bitch saying? You see, the thing is, my dad's been saying I should jack your rate for a while now. So I could miss the party, but I think three guys are talking somewhere north of 30. An hour? Well, your choice. Just pay it! Okay, fine, fine, fine. Katie, that's fine. Just get the kids out of the house right now. Do not use the front door. Use the sliding door. Last door. What? What? Why? What's going on? Just do it. Just get them out. Don't come back to our house until we come home. Okay, now I'm sensing some kind of element of danger here. No, no. Because that's going to run you an extra five per. Fine, fine. Just get the kids out right now. We love them and everything is going to be okay. Everything's okay. We love them. Bye. Sucker. Kids! They're now safe, what? they're safe, they're safe. You need to find someplace with a lot of people, a lot of people. As you can see, the floors are all pickled oak. Mm. This house was originally listed at 1.8 million, but now it's 320,000. Hmm. You know, I think it might come down more. 
So do I. Mm-hmm. And you call this Byzantine? Byzantine, Mediterranean, whatever you need it to be. Oh, my baby. Do you like the house? <laughs> I... Inappropriate. But touching. Sorry. It's OK. Thanks again, really. Oh, hey, no, it's the least I can do. Um, one other thing. Can we borrow some cash? We're running low, and I could pay you back tomorrow. Oh, you're coming back here tomorrow? Really? You guys gonna hang? You gonna chill? How much do you need? <laughs> you carry that much cash in your pajamas. Here, just take it. It's no biggie. No, Thank no. You. Claire, we're not taking the man's cash. We'll figure something out. No, let's just take it. No, we don't need the man's cash, honey. Get it out of your boob, Claire. Please. Thank you. Are you sure? Holbrook. Yes. Actually, there is something that you could do for me. Could you use your computer tracking system to locate my balls? Could you do that for me? I'm about to locate them. Because I haven't seen them since college. Are you expecting someone? I bought a new car a couple months ago. Maybe the Audi dealer needs a favor now. <laughs> it's the NYPD, Mr. Holbrook. Oh, my God, that's them. Those are the cops that tried to kill us. Hey. Hey, yo, yo. I'll be down in a minute. I'm having sex. I'm getting busy. Is that supposed to be me, or is that like Fat Albert or somebody? I don't know. What, what was I don't that? Know what that was. Is there another way out of here? Please, down through my garage, okay? There's a service elevator by the office. I'll keep them busy. Go, please. You have a garage in Manhattan. Hey, go. Oh my God! Hello? 